Hi everybody and welcome to this next video here on Meta Youth Leadership. Today we are going on a rapid journey through the Old Testament and we're going to look in particular at the person of Abraham. Abraham is a really key person in the Old Testament, somebody that God uses and he goes on a real journey. He goes on a physical journey and a journey of faith and we can learn so much from his life. So that's what we're going to dive into today. I don't know how you feel about journeys. I love journeys, particularly if they're to fun places. And a few years back, um, I was praying and preparing to take my son when he was 16 at the time on a journey across America. And we had an amazing journey. We traveled over 5,000 miles. Uh, we fitted it into three weeks. We camped in lots of different places. We went to 10 different states and different national parks and we were in mountains and we camped in wild places and it was an amazing experience. And I believe that's a great metaphor for the journey of faith, that we're going to go on an incredible journey here on Meta in growing in our relationship with God through Jesus. So today we're going to look at Abraham. And uh, just before we do that, I'm going to pray for us and then uh, we'll look at where we are in the journey on this term so far. So let's just pray for a moment. Almighty God, thank you for bringing us on Meta. And Lord, open up our hearts to receive this message and to learn about your Old Testament and how this is important for us. In Jesus name. Amen. So let's have a look at where we got to in this series so far. As you know, we're in the middle of this series of thinking about a Christian worldview. And we looked at the four planks that help us to understand the world the way God wants us to understand it, that God created the world, that it went wrong in Genesis chapter three, where we see Adam and Eve rebelling against God, sinning and evil coming into our world and this issue of sin in our lives. And uh, we're going to get to Jesus, which is which is the answer, but we're not quite there yet on plank three three and then completing history we're going to be looking at as we head towards Christmas. But today we're in this little bit here, uh, which I've just said is the Old Testament, which covers everything up to three, up to Jesus. And there are hundreds of years between two and three. And so we're going to have a little look at some of these aspects today. OK, so what I want to do now is I want to share with you uh, a little bit about Abraham. Uh, but before we do that, I'm going to get us to watch a little video of the Old Testament. So hopefully I'm going to stop my share. I'm going to reshare and you're going to see a little video from YouTube. Here we go. Three and a half minutes of the Old Testament. Quick overview. Here we go. Let's go. <laughs> Israel, God's people, ever wondered how the journey unfolded? Here's a snapshot through the Old Testament. Skip past nature boy Adam and Dr. Noah Doolittle. We're picking up the story with the first ever Jew, Abram. He lives in a place called Ur. It's not as bad as it sounds. One day, Abe hears God, pack your bags and move to Haran. From Haran, he treks to Canaan, presses on to Egypt. And after all that, he goes back to Canaan, which also wasn't as bad as it sounds. Then God's people get settled in. Meet Joseph. He's a bit of a show-off, struts around in his fancy robe and brags to his brothers that he's dad's favourite. Humble guy, then. They beat him and sell him into slavery. <laughs> Brotherly love. Joe ends up in Egypt and goes from prisoner to prime minister, rescues his fam from famine, and they all hug it out. But things don't stay cosy for long with Pharaoh by name, but not fair by nature. He makes some slave labour. God's people want out. And uh, Moses, as a chap with God through a burning bush, God gives Moses the mic. Let my people go. But Pharaoh's having none of it. Uh, no. So God sent her parts of the waters and his people strolled the sea to freedom. <laughs> Awesome. Next, there's talk of a purpose-built place for God's people, but first comes a 40-year wait. The baton passes to Joshua, one of the 12 spies. They I spy promised land. God's people get settled in, split into 12 families, but they don't stay in touch or talk on Facebook until they're fed up again, poked around. They want a king. Next up, Saul, a man's man. He gets the post, but doesn't deliver on uniting the families. And the new king, David, warrior by day, singer of epic love songs to God by night. Dave gains ground and expands the land. Then, son Solomon, bit of a ladies' man, but he's wise bloke too. Honestly, he'd run rings on Judah. He continues what his old man started. More land, but more wives and more questions too. 
Next, the crown was Rehoboam, who botches it up. Advisors tell him to go easy, so he raises taxes and chucks scorpions at people, as you do. If the tribe's a team, he loses the dressing room. God's people split. Ten up north. Two south. A bit later, the northern lot get offer from the Assyrians that they can't refuse. Then the Babylonians make a similar offer down south. Jerusalem's in rubble. They kick the king out and get shot at the temple. With Jews scattered and living out of suitcases, God decides it's time he gets his home back. He appoints Haggai and Zechariah as chief architects of the temple, Mark II. They go field of dreams in us. If we build it, they will come. And they smash it out of the park. Next, Bible boy Ezra and Nehemiah, king of Capcarion, build a well big wall around said temple. So enemies think twice before invading. Nice work, boys. Time and again, men and women step up to answer the call for obedience. And it wasn't just the Jerusalem locals back in Persia. Young Jewish girl Esther wins the next top queen competition and puts her life on the line to save her people. Well in, Esther. Talk about the right place at the right time, eh? Though well, something tells me God has something to do with it. So there we are, journey of God's people in a really big nutshell. And the next 400 years, it's the Greeks and Romans who are trending. Romans even end up calling the shots in Jerusalem. People start asking, where's God? He answers through the obedience of a pregnant virgin and a carpenter fiancé. Something tells me that story will forever change the course of history. Now let's have a little look at Abraham. What I want to do is I want to share my screen and go back to the story of Abraham. Hopefully you can see a, a timeline here of how um, how we move from the creation of the world through sin and evil coming into God choosing the person of Abraham. And it's really interesting how God does this. This guy, Abraham, he's called uh, as an individual to go and serve God. And you get this in the Bible, you get these big epic moves of God where he's doing something massive, like creating the world or changing the course of history. And yet he's choosing in all of that an individual to work through. That's how God chooses to work. And there's lots of them in the Bible. People like Ruth and Samuel and David and Esther and Daniel and Jeremiah and loads of others. Some of them came up in that video. And of course, that's what God wants to do with you. He wants to use you to change the world. And we often refer to this as the transcendence and imminence of God. It means that God is transcendent. He's all powerful and massive. And yet he's also personal and wants to interact with us and we can know him intimately. It's amazing. So early on in the first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis, we meet a man called Abraham who becomes Abraham. God changes his name. Abraham means exalted father. Abraham means father of many. And Abraham becomes the father of the Jewish nation. And in fact, all who have faith as revealed in the Bible by God. The New Testament so the Old Testament is the first half of the Bible. And it's all about God's dealings with the Jewish people. So now I'm just going to share with you the books of the Bible so you can see how the Old Testament is fitted. And the Old Testament here, you can see it's got 39 books in it. It's a pretty massive library uh, of, of books. And you can see you've got the law, which is the early ones. We've been looking at Genesis. There's lots in here around history, which gives us loads of history to the Bible. There's amazing poetry, like what David wrote, like the Psalms. And then we got the prophets and you've got the ma major prophets who wrote quite big books and then minor prophets. People like Daniel, who you may have heard the story was thrown into the lion's den. OK, so back to Abraham. What we're going to do now is we're going to have a little think about this person of Abraham and the faith journey that God had him on. And that helps us to understand the faith journey that we're on. So what I want you to do, I want you to pause this video and get your Bible. And we're going to read. Um, there's two sections today, five verses from chapter 12 and eight verses from chapter 17. And I, I want to put it out there. If you wanted to, uh, as a bonus, you could read Genesis 22. We're not going to do that in this video, but it's an amazing story about when God puts Abraham through another faith test, a really major one, where he's asked to sacrifice his son, which we'll come to in a bit later, which, of course, God never plans on him doing. Uh, but it's a test of faith. Um, so let's just quickly read Genesis chapter 12, one to five. Get your Bibles and I'm going to read it to you now. The Lord had said to Abraham, that was what he was called first, leave your country, your people and your father's household and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation and will bless you. 
I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. And we know that was fulfilled later because um, Jesus is a descendant of Abraham. So Abraham left as the Lord told him and Lot went with him. Lot, Lot was his nephew. Abraham was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife, Sari, who becomes Sarah, his nephew, Lot, and all the possessions that they accumulated and the people that they'd acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan and they arrived there. And we'll stop just there. And I think a few things we can learn straight away from this. It's never too late for God to call you or use you. Here's Abraham at 75 and God starts to speak to him. And it's a big challenge because he's saying to him, I want you to leave the country that, you know, Ur of the Shaldeans, which is in Haran. And I want you to go to this place called Canaan, which is going to become the Holy Land, which is where the Jews now live. It's, the, it's what we call Israel now. It was a really brave step to leave his home and go and do that because God had called him to. And that required faith at his age to go and do that. That was the first step of faith he had. Following God requires obedience to God. And it may, that's why we need to know the Bible. It's why we're getting into the Bible on Meta and you're going to learn quite a lot of different passages and, and things about the Bible because you're going to learn about what God is saying to us about how we can follow him and obey him and grow in our faith. And it may be scary. And um, I think for Abraham, it must have been so scary uh, leaving his home at that age to go on that journey. Faith isn't always easy, but it is the most exciting adventure of anyone's life to follow God and what God has for them. And of course, through Abraham obeying, Jesus comes and the whole world gets transformed because Abraham has faith and obeys. You might ask, what is faith? Well, I've put this as a definition. Faith is taking a promise of God and daring to believe it. Faith is taking a promise of God and daring to believe it. What I want us to do now is I want us to look at Genesis 17, 1 to 8. So just turn a couple of pages uh, forward in your Bibles uh, to Genesis chapter 17. And we see uh, God continuing uh, to grow Abraham's faith. And God makes a promise here. Let's read it. When Abraham was 99 years old, he's getting on now. The Lord appeared to him and said, I am God almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. I will confirm my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. We'll come to what covenant is in a minute. Abraham fell face down and God said to him, as for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abraham. Your Abraham, your name will be Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful and I will make nations of you and kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for the generations to come to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. Wow. God is saying a lot. We'll come to that in just a moment. God is saying a lot here. And what he's really saying is, Abraham, I'm calling you to have a great life ahead, but you've got to obey me and I'm going to do some amazing things through you. Through you is going to come a nation, the nation of the Jews. And that's what the Old Testament's all about. It's the nation of the Jews. And and, and and Abraham had to believe, Abraham had to believe that God was going to give him a son, even though he was 99 years old. That takes a lot of faith, a lot of faith to do that. In fact, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse one, it says faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Wow. Abraham is definitely mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11. If you want to read about heroes in the faith, read Hebrews chapter 11. It's in the New Testament. So at the age of 100, Isaac is born, Abraham's son. Wow. Abraham believed God and it happened. And we're told that because Abraham did believe God, he is called the father of faith in the Bible. Faith is believing God even when it seems impossible. And God loves it when we do that. And God blesses us when we choose to live by faith. Now, Abraham went on to have more faith tests. And this is true. When we start to when God gives us a test of faith, it's a challenge. And we when we pass the test, he gives us another test because he wants to grow us. He wants to grow us into people who truly trust and obey him. because he knows that's how we're going to live the best life. That's how we're going to unlock our best potential. But it's also how he's going to use us to transform the world around us. 
So here we see Abraham keeping going and having this other test, which I want you to read if you'd like to in Genesis 22. Read about that. But as that video said, it wasn't just Abraham that God calls. All through the Old Testament, God starts to call individual people. From Isaac, Isaac has a son called Jacob. And from Jacob come the 12 tribes of Israel, including Joseph in his multicolored dream coat. And then other leaders through the biblical history that God raises up. What's the big message of the Old Testament? The big message is that these people that God has called and shown how to live through Moses, through the Ten Commandments, all these wonderful things, they can't get it together because this problem of sin keeps coming up again and again and they keep messing up. And God raises up judges and prophets and kings and leaders. Some of them are fantastic, like King David, but all of them can't quite solve this problem of sin that's messing up the world. But God knew he had a plan. He had a plan that one day he would send the saviour, the Messiah. And we know, of course, that that is Jesus. Because remember, nobody could solve this problem because the heart of the problem is the problem of the human heart. And only God himself could really solve this issue by changing our hearts, by putting things right. And so through the Old Testament, we get these incredible prophecies. We get these prophecies. There are over There are lots of prophecies in the Bible, in the Old Testament, and Jesus fulfills well over 300 of the prophecies about the Messiah. There is no doubt one of them he even fulfills before he's born, saying that he's going to be born in Bethlehem. That's something he couldn't fix. It just happened because he fulfills all these prophecies. He is the Messiah. The people of God in the Old Testament are waiting. They're waiting earnestly for the Messiah to come. Jewish people are still waiting today because they haven't recognised Jesus But Christians, we recognize Jesus as the fulfillment of the prophecies. And Messiah is the is the Hebrew word for the Greek word Christ. And it means chosen one. That God would one day send the chosen one to put us right with him. So what is Christian leadership all about? Well, it's about faith. Christian leadership is about faith. And um. I want you to have a think about some questions that we're going to discuss in our coaching clinic this week, which is this. How would you describe faith? Put it into your words. I'd love to hear what you think. Why is your faith important to you? Let's have a think about that. In what ways is your faith being tested at the moment? Because you're on a journey of faith. In what ways is your faith being tested? In other words, where do you need help? And do you have questions about the Old Testament? Because most of us do. The Old Testament's got a lot of stuff in there and it can be a real challenge. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to teach us a leadership tool as we think about um, leadership. We think about faith and we think about our calling and the journey that God's got us on. And this tool is called the 7030. And it's a it's a tool where you can benchmark your reality. It's a great tool um, that I use regularly to help us assess, to help me assess where I'm spending my time. Is it in the right areas? And am I using my strengths appropriately? So let me just explain how the tool works. In the 7030 tool, um, you've got on the left hand side, if we're spending 70 percent of our time doing what is naturally we're naturally good at our natural strengths what we call unconscious competence. We're just good at it without having to think about it. And what we find energizing, that's really good. And only 30% of our time on learned behavior, conscious competence. In other words, we can do it well, but we have to work at it and what we find draining. So for me, doing administration, lots of paperwork is in the 30%. For me, doing meta youth and investing into you guys for your future, that's very much in my 70%. So it's great. And what I want you to think about is what's your balance? Are you 70, 30 right now? Or are you 60, 40 or 50, 50? Or are you even the other way around? 30, 70, which can be a really uncomfortable place to be. I started out life as an engineer. And do you know what? It was like the other way around for me. It was like 30, 70. I just wasn't a natural engineer. I'm not good at fixing technical problems. I'm good at helping people with their real life problems. Uh, personal problems and faith issues. So this was a big thing for me. When I was a vicar, it got to about 50-50. Now what I do, I know it's a 70-30. So I want you to have a little think around this idea of going on a journey, benchmarking your reality and thinking about where you are with your 70-30. What's the balance for you? Is it 70-30? 
Is it 60 40? Is it 50 50? Is it the other way around? Think about how that relates to you in terms of where you are now, thinking about your schooling, the subjects you do, your friends, your family, how you're spending most of your time. What would you say you are right now? Are you 70 30 or something else? Now, when thinking about your future career and life, why is it important to get your 70 30 right? I want you to have a think about that. And what future role might enable you to live out your 70 30? Because it's a wonderful thing if we can actually do that well. Well, well done, everybody. There was a lot in that video. Take some time to think about your journey of faith. And you might want to rewind the video back to those questions about faith, because we're going to think about those in our coaching clinic and also to do your 70 30. Thanks. See you on the coaching clinic. <laughs>